film language is completely different from illustrated text in its pure ideal form, of course, and it's different from uh, just actors, it's in theater just filmed. Um, could you maybe elaborate a little bit on this pure film language? How is it different from uh, other art forms? Because as far as I understand, and as far as I can see, you're one of the purest proponents of this type of cinema. I think it's a call you can take, but don't cut. I know. Yes. Ah, Natalia, I am doing uh, uh, an interview now, but uh, yeah, yeah, just tell me, yes. Natalia? Oh, maybe she cut. Yeah, maybe she thought she was going back after the interview. Yeah. Okay, yes, as I was saying, uh, what is the difference of film language from other art forms? Well, <clears throat> it's it could be a long... Uh, answer to this question. Well, that's great, because because I'm asking because I'm interested in this question. It's, it's well, maybe I'll, I'll short it down a little bit. Not, not uh, how film language is different from all other art forms, but how is um, pure film language different from what we mostly see in cinema? Just actors talking, you know, psychological collisions, just well, explaining... I stuff. think the, the, the huge question is the relation between what we can call the story, mm -hmm. and uh, and the, what we can say the cinema itself. Uh, most of the time, uh, cinema is under the control of the storytelling. So, uh, to be precise, uh, editing is most a question of building a scene in which the continuity of space and time is uh, organized. So editing is most a question to make this continuity uh, uh, appear. Mm -hmm. But I think that cinema, it's the question is how, with uh, all these possibilities that you have with cinema, like editing, uh, light, and sound, and framing, and all of this, you know, you can organize something else, not just this continuity, not just to be under the control of the storytelling, but to organize a relation between the element. Uh, uh, and these relations between the elements is most of the time, I think, for me, is relation of uh, intensities. Mm -hmm. And these intensities of light, of sound, of movement, of distance, of uh, rhythm, of tempo, of confrontation between f things to another things, images to another images, but not uh, it's confrontation. It's it's a poetic uh, organization of time and space. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and, and this is the the most important question because all these different quality of intensities are in fact different qualities of uh, affect, of, of sensation, of feelings, of emotion that you can get uh, from one shot to another shot to another shot. So this is the main, uh, for me it's the main difficulties but it also it's a it's main uh, uh, unstrong question with cinema. So in a way cinema is would be considered maybe like a psychedelic act almost for the viewer. Uh, sorry? Uh, in a way, cinema can be perceived as a psychedelic act. Yes, right? yes. It, you, which is one wave after another of sensations and effects yes. that you don't really intellectualize so much as you live through. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, you probably know this text of Artaud, mm -hmm. uh, Sorcellerie and Cinema, and yeah, yeah, where yeah. he says that uh, cinema can, could be or should be like uh, an injection uh, inside of the body itself. So it, no going through the intellect process, but mm -hmm. going inside of the body. So just with the possibility that you have with cinema. Be uh, and, and this is a very important question because intellect, you can think a lot, you can be very clever, you can um, all of this, you know, but yeah, it's something else when you want to approach the, the truth 
of the sensation of the the emotion. What do you think? I mean, you just said about the truth of the sensation, but is it actually possible to capture a certain truth, or is it subjective every time? Is there like a real something behind the uh, behind the sensation, or is it? No, I think there is a real something in, s in the sense it's it's you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're approaching uh, something with the sensation, you're approaching yourself in a way. And uh, in this sense, uh, it's, an, it's a, a poetic uh, decision. Uh, if, you, if you put a, a shot of a tree and then a face and then uh, the river and then uh, a movement of the camera, uh, on, on the body, for instance, this four shot is going to organize, you know, a certain kind of possibility. Yeah, yeah like, like a special syntax that you know, yes. you created. Yes, uh, and this possibility is not only a possibility, uh, it's not only a formal possibility, but it's also a possibility to bring the story. Mm -hmm. So th the story mustn't be first. Uh, uh, the sensation is first. The story should arrive inside of this process. But n so most of the time people are writing script only to say this is a story of him and her and they have a love affair and then a guy arrives and all these kind of things. But in a way, cinema is not this kind of question. Cinema is if I put this face, this hand, this shot of the sky, and then if there is a movement of camera on the shoulder of, of a kid, what's, what's this organization of space and time and confrontation between these different elements? Like, for instance, in Sombra, when uh, the actress raises her head and then there's a plane in the sky. It's yes. So I mean, it cannot be written down as a, as a, as a plot or like no. as a story element. Just something that happens and can be only in cinema because yes. it's a temporal thing. It happens in time, but also has this sort of sort of tension that I love so much about your films, where every shot is filled with a certain um, I don't even know how to call it because it's something that sort of like sways away from intellectual explanation. Of course, people write essays about your films and they can explain it, but what I cherish the most is that it always runs away like a ghost from a sort of pinning down of it. You know, it's always something more something else as well. Um, and by the way, you just said when you were talking about that, um, about uh, how the viewer actually sees himself in a way in a movie every time. So there should be no story in that. Uh, I'm sure you've heard a lot of interpretations of your films. And uh, just a couple of days ago, I saw this little interview. Uh, David Lynch was asked if he could explain the view Twin Peaks. And he was like, just imagine that the author is dead. You cannot ask him any questions. It doesn't matter what I think, seriously. What matters is that the film is its own thing, now it lives there. And how you approach, how you meet, meet this thing, like, it lives inside of you now. It doesn't matter what the author thought. Well, either way. And as far as I understood, you, you sort of like also uh, agree with that kind of meaning. Yeah, but I, I think um, cinema is a dream. I mean, really deeply it's a dream. Most of the nature of this dispositif that we can say cinema is connected to this uh, aspect of our lives, this dreaming moment of our lives. You are sitting in the dark room, you are, you are not moving anymore, you are looking at a huge picture in front of you, you have the sound and you can't do anything and you can't decide anything and you are just uh, under the... <laughs> you are haunted by, by what's happening in front of it's you. Haunted, yeah. yeah, and at one cut you can see something very, very wild and, that, and you don't want to have seen it also. So you are under a kind of threat, a, a kind of, you know, of, uh, how I can say that? Yes, yeah, a s suspense, mm -hmm, you know. Yes. So it's a very, it's a very strong position, and uh, and also uh, the way that you are moving inside of the story. You know, you can organize 
the possibility for the audience to be inside of something that escape always. You try to grab the things, but it's escape from your hands. You are not sure that you are seeing a body. Mm -hmm. You are not sure what you are seeing from this body. You are. It's a kind of difficulty to 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 have a, a, a real certitude mm -hmm. of what is in front of you. In a way, like when a little child sees the world, he doesn't yet know all the words that he can call. Yes, objects. of course. For instance, I remember when I was a little kid, uh, you walk out in this field. I was at four or five, and the wind blows, and there's a forest somewhere in the dark, and I was never there because it's too far, because you're a kid, you can only be around the house, and there's certain mystery there, the haunting that you mentioned. But I think what film critics tend to do a lot of times, by explaining this, it's like when you're a kid and you believe in ghosts, and there's a certain mystery in the world, but then someone comes and explains, ah, ghosts don't exist, this and that, I can explain everything scientifically, and you sort of lose the magic in a way. Because intellectual explaining, I mean, it can be good, of course, for the discourse or whatever. But I think what I love about your cinema the most is that it's more than discourse. It's it's what I look for in cinema, and uh, it gives this haunting. Yeah, you just found the word that I was looking for. Yes. So, but you're right. It's it's something also connected with childhood and memories, uh, memories and, and maybe this moment of the child when you are. I I spoke to to this a few times now, but uh, it comes to me now more clear and clear that. These first um, months of our lives, mm -hmm. when we can't speak, when we can, we can't, and you you are all the things happens around you, you, your body, your mother takes the body, and and, and you're on the shoulder, and suddenly the light goes like that, and and they sound too loud, maybe, and you are some kind of feeling inside of the body with the milk and. And all of these construct, you know, things that you can't even put words on it, even now, you know. Because when you felt it, you had no, you didn't know language. No, so your body no. remembers the feeling, but you didn't have the language to uh, intellectualize. No, and the, la and the language even after is not helpful to yes. Yes. to grab this because this is the real, precisely, you know, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, it's here, but we don't know what it is, in fact. And cinema gives you the strong possibility to approach again, in a way, this kind of feeling, this kind of moment. And uh, also, it's, it's connected to this strong affective uh, intensity moment, uh, you know, like uh, you're afraid, or, or, or you're a lot of joy, or, or you're totally sad, or, you know, it's always boom, 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 boom. It's always, it's like not... Like music, in a way. Yes, it's not a, uh, it's not a, co a process in a con with a continuity, you know, that you can organize. It's much more chaotic, it's much more uh, strong, you know, it's much more things that happening and then you don't know what what's happening now and somebody, and something happened again. I, in La Vie Nouvelle, for instance, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to know if it's, if these two guys arrive, is the father or the friend? And father, friend, brother, yeah. lover, we don't know. Everything is confused. Uh, was it like that from the beginning, or in the beginning of the script you had like tighter No. No, no, we never decide who, what kind of relation they okay. have precisely. By the way, coming to the next question, we just talked about that cinema creates this haunting feeling of experiencing something that we don't have a clear, like, memory for, but that the like, sort of like this proto-memory of, of the real, as you call it, something that is beyond language. But then, before you make a film, still, you, it exists in the form of a script. So I would like to know, like, how do you create your scripts? I mean, I don't imagine it's the usual format, uh, you know, dialogue. No, uh, I, I, the form of your well, it's different for each movie, uh, again, the script. Uh, it's, uh, um, it's not the same. I'm not writing in the same way for Somme or for mm -hmm. a lake. Uh, could you maybe, uh, well, you just mentioned Sombra and like how a me your methods of approach to writing in those two films different? Well, for. Uh, Without giving too much away. No, no, for Sombra it was few pages at the beginning. Uh, and most of, of the approach concerned the nature of the relation that. Uh, this guy um, has 
with the world. Uh, this feeling that is sometimes too close to, mm -hmm. to the wood or too close to the body of the woman or how the sound is, uh, how he listens to the sound in the room when he's alone, how he could be in a kind of catatonia position. So I wrote not at all a, a psychological portrait of him. More like states of affection or states yeah, of feeling. Yeah, states of feeling, state, state of, of affect in mm -hmm. a way, you know, and I take notes about that and I have this idea that uh, the light is uh, only the end of the light, mm -hmm. but the source is very strong, but the film is shot only at the end when there is no more light and the sound is very heavy, uh, the source of the sound, but when uh, we hear this sound, it's just at the end. So it's like uh, everything was fading, you know. Uh, I, I just had this impression, you tell me this, watching your films, I think who it was, Salvador Dali or whoever said this, when we see, when we are scared in a dream, is it that we see a tiger in our dream and we get scared? Or is it that we just feel fear and our mind draws the tiger to explain the fear? So in a way, I feel your films are made not like usually like people write a story like I need this character to do this and that, but you have a sort of feeling or state you want to create, and only after you think what can like physically happen for this state to arrive. Yeah, but so what, usually it's vice versa. But in the dream, where the tiger, you are the tiger uh -huh. also. There is no tiger and no you. I mean, it's all you. It's all your own. Material movement of uh, emotion. Mm -hmm. So, my movie, I think, are putting the audience in a very strange uh, uh, and sometimes difficult place because there is no all uh, the system of uh, uh, judgment, for instance. Mm -hmm. In Sombre, there is no police, there is yeah. no no moral complex. No moral uh, complex. The no. Is more chaotic, and you want to get lost in it. Yes, uh, it's it's not a division of the body through the division of the, the society. Mm -hmm. It's uh, more or less the, the body itself, you know. So, and uh, so it's you are very alone, and you are very confronting the film when you see my movie. I think. Nobody is, is helping you at this moment, and you are projecting a lot of yourself on the image. So that's why my movie sometimes provokes such reaction, you know. In Somme, for instance, I remember this story because it was incredible. The, uh, a woman uh, stand up after the screening and says to me, it's absolutely awful, this f movie such much blood in it, but, there's no blood in it. Oh. but no one yeah. drop of blood, so, I mean, she was just watching blood, but why? So it's so much yourself, it's, it's not a, a construction, it's not a representation, there is not so much distance that you can be, uh, you know, uh, protected by, mm -hmm. you are exposed, the, the film needs you to be exposed. And uh, it's uncomfortable sometimes, but also it's a very strong experience, I suppose, to be exposed like that to yourself mm -hmm. uh, by a movie, you know, so... Before that, we were talking about the self, and actually about childhood and memories. Um, I don't know if you can talk about this, but uh, what, do you remember yourself in childhood? What kind of kid were you when you were a child? Well, I think I was... Um, I'm not trying to get psychoanalytical, I'm just... No, 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 but you, in fact, I think nothing, nothing special, you know, it was... Uh, I just remember a strong memory of the place where I go with uh, my family for the summer. What, what was that? Uh, it was just near the city where I, I was born, Saint-Étienne. Okay. And it was forest and... Uh, it was this kind of light that I oh, get, I you know. I grew up near the forest, so I just don't know. I don't have like a natural motherland, but that forest and those memories of the light, maybe the wind from the sea. Something. Yes, I that think so. Like it's this kind of things, and uh, it's very important because uh, you, it's built to inside of you. You, uh, it constructs something, you know, very, very deeply with, uh, uh, with you. So yeah, it was, and. 
walking and uh, be with my mother and uh, it was it was uh, i mean quite a normal childhood uh, there is no yes, strong trauma oh, I'm, not, I'm not even asking but i'm not trying to no no but i tell yeah, you because it could yeah. be yeah? but uh, no it was i mean actually you know what i've noticed i'm talking to some people that people who create well if i may use the word like extreme uh, expressions of arts actually had normal childhoods and you know happy families or I mean, yeah. perfectly happy but still they were not fucked up you know they were okay. yeah you, I, know, you don't have to be fucked up yeah i think i think it's very difficult to be fucked up and to make cinema yeah because you're either fucked up and that's like a full time job to be fucked up yeah if you want to create you have to like take a vacation to like normal lab at least for yeah. a while yeah, it's impossible. I think it's Godard who says that. I think it's uh, Godard says it's impossible to be crazy when you are a filmmaker. Actually, I should think Lynch talked about it. Oh, it's maybe, like, yeah. Well, he, he said two things, like, you, you don't have to suffer to show suffering. Well, I mean, you have to feel it in certain yeah, way, yeah. Like, but not like during the Of creation. course. Then you can't work. No, of course. And you know, a lot of people are very amazed when they know that on my set, there is a lot of joy, a lot of pleasure. There is no... Uh, no, I can uh, promise you there is no uh, difficulties, uh, never with the actors, with no, nobody is uncomfortable. It, it's, it, it's a lot of joy when we shoot and um, at the end of the day we make parties, we dance, we... So, and we are very uh, in a strong confident relationship. Uh, there is no kind of thing that we do and uh, under the you know, yeah, yeah, sure. uh, and there is no so much uh, hierarchy, you know. Uh, there is okay, no like the first well, assistant. Like yes, yeah, it's a together. community of people. It's a family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are a strong family, actors, crew, and we shoot the movie in this kind of movement. So. Uh, you know, it's. I think it's very a very ethical position uh, on my set, mm -hmm. and and sometimes you learn that uh, with huge comedy, the set is awful. You know, people are fighting yeah, yeah. behind the scenes, behind yeah, the scenes, quarrels yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So you see, yeah, because otherwise it's impossible to make the movie I make. Yeah, especially yeah. you make films that are so like honest and. Um, Intimate. Yeah. If you didn't have that atmosphere with, with the team, I don't think that would be possible. No, it's not possible. I, I could be even, uh, I mean, uh, disgusting. You know what I mean? So it's not a psych psych psychiatric. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, in the sense that, for instance, your actors may do extreme things, but only because they believe you and they trust you and, like, yeah, I'm following you. Okay, yes. we're in this together. And stuff. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if we're shooting very, very wild and tough scene, very dif difficult scene, for them, but the difficulty was is not a human difficulty. It's a, because we are we believe in each other, you know. Yeah. So so, and I I I'm, I'm never drop them alone. I never say to them, okay, do that, and I look them, you know. I'm I'm with them. I am a part of the scene because I'm shooting myself and because I am really with them. So I'm never drop them, leave them alone with their difficulties, you know, I am, yeah, yeah, I'm close, very close to, to each of them, so it's, uh, really it seems, uh, it's difficult to say that, uh, and, but really the world are not too much, it's really a love story, I mean, making movies, it's really a love story, you have to, you have to love, I mean, you have to love the actors, you have to love the, 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 what you are shooting, you have to love even this tree that you are shooting. You want to, because it's beautiful, it's strong, it's gorgeous. So, you know, you you have to be in a very strong, uh, uh, with a lot of desire for what you are doing. Otherwise, it's, I think, it's impossible to make the movie anyway. Okay, um, I also wanted to ask, we talked about uh, childhood of yours, but you have a child of your own. Um, maybe you could tell us a bit about your son. I know he does music, and I heard some of his music is great. And uh, I don't know what's your relationship? I mean, what's 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 his in, what's his interested in? Well, it's it's not only my son because it's uh, it's a really family uh, organization in a way because um, I, I I run answers about my son, but 
when I met Thorne, I, I met my producer, Catherine Jack, mm -hmm. and it was the first time I met her, and it was 20 years ago now, something like that, a bit more. And uh, we decided to do the movie together. And mm -hmm. uh, she has uh, kids, and at this moment she has uh, two older kids and two little girls of six, seven years old, maybe. And I had two kids of six, seven years old, same age, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. And uh, 20 years later, <laughs> uh, these two little girls of my producer now co-produce okay. this by the night. Cool. My son made the music and my daughter play a little part in the end of the film. Just Madeleine, she's Madeleine coming oh, okay. at the end. Okay. So you see, it's such important for us to be able to do the things with this uh, strong uh, harmony, even if it's fight, because we fight uh, sometimes a lot. Even with my producer, we fight, but we fight with the, uh, a lot of uh, yes, a lot of love. I mean, a lot of uh, we believe in us, you know. We so um, my son, to go back to your question, and uh, he make music, and uh, it begins. I made a film about Masawa Dachi, and yeah. and the. I just uh, show him some rushes and I said to him, I have difficulties to edit, could you make some kind of music just to see how I can edit the things, to give me the tempo of the movie. And he made a few, few things. And it was very good, I did it very quick after that. And uh, for Malgré la Nuit, I asked him very early to do a song. And this is Fever, it's a song that uh, Roxanne Mesquida is singing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so he was playing piano at home, doing the guitar, singing himself. So I was with Fever most of the time for weeks. So you sort of incorporated it? Yes, thing. yes. And uh, then he asked him to wrote to the part. And, and also he was on the set with the band and to play live for Roxanne. Uh, so we, the music arrived in a very uh, strong connection uh, to the movie. It wasn't, I didn't make the movie and then I called him. Yeah, so it was sort of like part of it, like a living organ. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I think I, I can't, otherwise I can't do the things, you know. I can't do the things by planning and say, okay, I'm doing the picture, that I'm doing the sound. Then I call the musician and he's, doing the score, then I record it, and then I have the mixing s stuff, you know. It's more, uh, the things are more moving, you know, from one situation to another one. The producers must really trust you on this one, because producers usually ask for yes. permission. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes, and she trusts me a lot, you know, she trusts me a lot even when I take strong decisions. Uh, for instance, for the casting of the lake, I had made all the casting in Finland. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I go back with her in Finland, because we are supposed to have a co-production with Finland, I, I realized that all the cast is not, is not true for me anymore. It was a wild decision. But you went to Russia because you wanted to find someone or you found Dmitry by accident? And no, 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 because I said I don't want to do the movie there in Finland. And I, and I cancel everything and we stop everything. So you can imagine for the producer. Yeah, sure. So all everything stopped, so I, I said to her, I have to go to Moscow because I'm sure it's Russian actor. So cool. she says to me, okay, let's go. <laughs> Actually, talking about Russia, I really wanted to ask, for instance, oh, it's for anyone, for instance, for you it may be Russia, for me it may be France. Um, we all always have sort of like a myth about a country. Since I'm, I'm very young, it's true, huh? maybe I was 10 or 12 years old. I was, um, I don't know why, I was fascinated by, uh, by the Russian things, you know, even the name, okay. you know, the, uh, like Boris, or like, you know, or, or Alexei. Alexei, you know. Uh, I don't know why, because there is no Russian connection in my family at all. But it was there, and then of course, after that, when I begin to read stuff, and and uh, I get more and more attracted. Uh, 
But I think the thing that is much attractive for me with Russia is the people. I mean, is is where the people are. How are they different from French people? Right? Well, I think there is. A, it, it's well, okay, a, we, can't, we can't put it down to a stereotype, but yeah, it's stereotype. What's it's stereotype. What's, what's the it, it's so. a bit stereotype, but it's true. I mean, there is a kind of soul in Russia. A kind of, uh, if you see Dostoevsky, it's incredible. They, they, they arrive in the room, and now there are two, three, and five other guys arrive, and they make tea, and they talk, and, and suddenly he has to leave, and he leaves, and he goes in the stairs, and then now he walks like crazy yeah. in the street. And she sees some woman, and she, yes. she destroys him. Yes, yeah. and he gets too much fever, and he, he falls down, and yeah. he. I mean, you have yes, it's an epileptic yeah, yeah. system, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it's intensity, sure, so sure. Uh, it's not, you know, organized only by... Uh, so France is more uh, rational? More or? rational, more intellectual process, more, uh, I don't know how I can say that, uh, it's, it's more uh, socialized, I mean, you know? Even by reading, like, let's say, you know, French plays and this whole, like, history of uh, French uh, text yeah. textual culture, it's more... As you said, it's more distanced in a way, more like contextualized. Yeah, it's more organized, you yeah. know, it's more... Uh, less chaotic? Uh, less chaotic, it's more, you know, it's great, but what I, what I love with Russia is precisely this, you know, it's because it's, it seems connected a lot in my movies and the way that I want to make movies and, uh, and also the body of the... Uh, if you go in the street here, the people, the, how they are, how they move. You, we, you feel that the Russia, Russia is, is huge. It is. I mean, Moscow is not Russia. Is this yes, Russia. it's huge. So, and, and the story is crazy. All these people uh, in the Second World War. Yeah, sure. all, the, all your story is incredibly strong, very powerful. So actors, when I met actors here, it's here, all this. There are different you know? Russian actors? Oh, yeah, completely. Yeah. They, it's, uh, so I met... 15 okay. Russian actor, and f all of them was was incredible, and they were so strong. So, and uh, so yes, it, it's I don't know why, but uh, yes, it's it's this kind of, of, of also you already told the story to, uh, yesterday we had a conversation, but uh, about uh, luck that uh, Dmitry wasn't available in the summer and the film was supposed to have a different vibe, like a summer vibe. Then it was filmed in winter, and it turned out great. We're not going to talk about the difference. But um, I just wanted to know if it's possible a little bit, how, what was the original idea behind the luck? How, was it, how would it be different if it wasn't the summer? It's going to be different, of course, because... I mean, maybe you planned it a bit differently. What was the original? No, but, I mean, Alexei, mm -hmm. when he's walking, everything around him is is getting inside of him, you know? Uh, so, when I was writing for the summer, I was writing about the flowers, the movement of the flowers, the colors, the things like that, so. But the, the feeling is the same. It's not flowers now, it's, it's snow. It's the snowstorm. So, so yeah. it's not that important if it's summer or winter, it's the sensations. Yes, that you felt. Okay. absolutely, because, because uh, it's a detail. In a way, if it's summer, winter, it's a detail, an important detail because it changed the nature of the light, of the the nature of uh, the things. But but the, the the level that we are talking is much more deeper. So at this level where we try to to be, there is no difference mm -hmm. between summer and winter, because here it's Alexei with himself with his epileptic problem a crisis and how everything gets inside of him and blow up and put him down and shaking, you know, so, and uh, how he feel with his sister, this love, very painful because he couldn't access to it, he didn't know even what it is because it's not so clear like an incest, you know, it's so, and his mother blind and uh, this place very isolated. This is uh, uh, the very, very strong uh, basis uh, yeah. or current, you know? And after that, yeah, it could be winter, it could be summer, it could be... 
you know, the movie I say that a lot of time now because I'm, but I, movies are inside of yourself. That's very important to understand. It's not outside, it's inside. So making the movie is trying to put this out. But you don't know the movie until the movie is finished. You, you, when it's finished, you are very surprised. And it's also absolutely what you try to reach, but it's something else. And because it's something else, it is alive, you know? Otherwise, it's a um, death process. Coming back to this, is it actually possible to teach filmmaking or film directing? And I mean, um, as you just once said, the techniques can be taught in just a couple of days. It's, it's a matter of days, maybe weeks. But can actually filmmaking be taught or it can only be learned? You know what you're saying? No, it couldn't be taught. I'm sure of that. What, it, what can be given to students or to people, it's... Uh, the possibility for them to understand step by step what they want. Mm -hmm, sure. so that can be uh, given because uh, I'm not a teacher, so you know, if I'm doing things like that, it's I'm just telling who I am uh, uh, and how I work, you know, and uh, after that, people can do their own yeah, stuff. Well, more like a personal encounter and you yeah. come away with, with what you've got. It's not something it's yes. not something that a professor gives or whatever. It's not No, that it's not knowledge. We're talking about chao a chaotic expression. It's yeah. not that structuralized. It's more of a experience of meeting someone actually. Yes, absolutely. It's it's not a question of knowledge, it's a question of uh, relation yeah. of uh, like with the actors, it's the same, in fact. I, I'm the same with the students and with the actors, in a way. Actually, talking about relations, I, don't know, I wanted to ask, uh, you were talking about Dostoevsky, and I remember this chaotic images of Nastasia Filippovna and everything. I wanted to know, what kind of woman do you like? Well, uh, I think women were very strong in their choice. Uh, very yes, women were w women who knows uh, really what they are, what they want. I'm not so much interesting in historical, you know, stuff or thing like that. So mm -hmm. I, I need this. I, I think that's kind of of woman I can be with, you know, like a uh, strong, strong personality, strong partner. You know, yes, like, like not. In a social way, part of it, like an existential way, like yes, absolutely, yeah. To make something, yeah. Of course, you can have an affair with a beautiful woman, yeah, but that that's that's different, you know. But to to think about uh, a, a true relation with uh, a woman, I think this must be a quality that I'm I, uh, I appreciate. Yeah. And uh, coming to the last question, I want to ask you just touched on a very important topic of actually having a relation with someone is how difficult is it and how possible is it for like for because people usually run around and they talk about something they meet but they don't really have a personal connection they just you know just like ghosts swimming here and there how difficult do you think it is to actually have a personal connection with someone that you meet on the street that someone you becomes a friend or a love interest or a parent even lots of us live our lives and our parents are, yes, they're our parents who love them, but we don't know them. You know, we might live the whole life and not even know our own, know we were, not even know our own mother, in a way. So what do you think about how difficult it is to build these relationships, or, I don't know, if, if I ask the I question don't, correctly. No, you I know what, I think, I, I'm actually wrong with this question, because what I'm doing is, I'm trying to intellectualize it, and maybe that's not the way it should go, but... But uh, what you would like to, uh, to know more, about this relation that you can have with somebody a, else. A human relation, basically. Like just but it depends, human beings it depends of you. Uh, sure. The, 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 there is no other question, in fact. So it depends of you. So you built the relation, and the other, of course, built the relation with you. That is true. It's not something that just happens. Yeah, yeah so it's, a, it's, it's still, it's a, there's a reciprocity, you know, in the relation. So. And it depends what you are 
I don't know, but even it's very difficult to... Well, I'll, I'll narrow it down, let's say, friendship. Like, for instance, people meet, meet each other every day, but some of them become, become friends not just because they have fun together or something. There's certain, I don't know, okay, maybe I'm going too far with this, but... No, but you know Montaigne with La Boétie, yeah. they are so close friends, and he says, because it was him and because it was me. So. Parce okay. que c'était lui, parce que c'était moi. Okay. So, you know, it's... Uh, You meet somebody and, and suddenly with this person something is, is open and you can go and walk in this opening. That's you know? a beautiful image here, like, like a new door is open and you can yes, discover, new doors is open. discover like a new territory, a new it's ground. Absolutely, and that's why it's so difficult death, because when you have a friend dying or, or di dead, You are not lo only losing a friend, you are losing all, of your world, you know? all this yeah. world, all this opening, all this quality of the world. So you have other quality with other friends, but this quality is lost forever. True. And that's, that's a really painful. I'd like to think about it a little bit. And uh, thanks for my face, Thanks. Thanks.